Open our eyes that we might see. Open our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts that we might love. And our hands that we might serve. Take our souls and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. And Jesus asked, who do you think I am? What do people think who I am? And they came up with answers like, they say you're John the Baptist. Some said you're Elijah. Some said all kinds of things. And then Jesus said, well, who do you think I am? Asking his disciples. And surprise, surprise, Peter, Simon, gave the correct answer. And I say surprise because he very seldom did what he should have done, and I hate the word should, but he very seldom did say, and of course later on was very disappointed in Jesus, quote, the Messiah, because everyone else wanted the Messiah be something else, not who Jesus was and what Jesus was all about. What they would have liked is a Messiah wearing beautiful clothes, getting rid of the Romans and conquer all the people who were against them. But that didn't happen, did it? Jesus was different. Jesus was the one who taught us how to love and how to love our enemies. And that, for me, is very difficult. But I try and pray constantly to have a more forgiving heart and to love my enemies. I think my very first encounter was when I, just, when I needed to forgive Hitler. And that was very hard, very hard for me. But that's what we have to do if we call ourselves Christians. So who do you think we are? Who are you? Have you ever thought about that? And have you ever thought about how your identity changes, how you go from a child to probably a parent, a teacher, or, what, or whatever it is? And how do people identify you? Do they identify you as a Christian? Do you identify yourself as a Christian? And what does it mean? If I say I'm a Christian, does it mean, well, I go to church? That's nice. Or I just say I'm a Christian, that's very nice. But what else? Is that what makes you a Christian? Is that what you identify yourself with, what it means to be a Christian? I don't think so. Being a Christian is hard work. Being a Christian means that you follow Jesus in terms of being within a community, and I'm talking to the choir here, because obviously we are in a very, very loving community that is, always amazes me. Does it mean that you help the poor? That you work for a better life for others or just yourself? So who am I? Who are you? And who was Jesus for you? Identifying and saying who Jesus is is incredibly important not just for you, but for the people who you talk with. If I say, I follow the Jesus movement, what does it mean? It's an inward right now for the Episcopal Church, but it has a tremendous amount of meaning, doesn't it? It means we identify ourselves and say we will do Jesus' work. In other words, we take the, our baptism vows, our confirmation vows, very, very seriously, and that's who we are. But do people see us that way? How do people see us? For instance, when I was ordained as a deacon, a very close friend of mine said, Ellen, you are a traitor. And I looked at her and said, what do you mean? She said, well, you joined them whoever them are, meaning clergy. Now you don't, no longer are one of us. And I said, hey, wait a moment. Something is really wrong. 
because being clergy makes me more one of everyone than I was before. And I was induced to her because in her opinion, clergy were up here and she was down there. Or another person who said to me, when we talked about identity, said, I'm no one. What do you mean you're no one? You're a woman, you're a mother, and above all, you're a daughter of, of, uh, of God. And that makes you very, very special. Everyone, everyone is a child of God. And those of us who claim they're Christians go one step beyond. We believe in Jesus Christ, which means we follow Jesus Christ, not only by word, but deed. So who am I? Am I one of those nameless people who happen to be homeless, who happen to be in jail or prison, and have numbers? Or am I a person, or in a hospital, where also often you are nameless? Or am I being called by name? Being called by name is probably one of the most important things I can think of, because it gives us a feeling of belonging. My husband, when he finally anchored in Hawaii after sailing from Los Angeles to Hawaii, when he got off the boat, walked like I usually do now, kind of hobbling and off balance, uh, and said, and he also needed a shower and he was hungry, he said, I felt like a bum. And immediately I said to him, what's his name calling? What's a bum? And we talked about that. But this is one way people get identified, isn't it? By profession or how they look, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I remember once when I was in a church that I will not name to meet with someone. I had all the proper clothes on, even had jewelry on. It was before I was ordained. I knew all the clergy, and I was supposed to meet someone. Uh, who was a postulant for commission on ministry, and not one soul greeted me, not one person. And I thought, gee, and this is one church I sure don't want to go to. It's so different from here, by the way. It was so amazing. Now, when they found out who I was, guess what? People invited me to coffee hour. By that time, I felt equally snobby and said, I don't know, I don't think so, I have a meeting. It was so astounding that people identify with whom they want to identify. And what do we do? Is this what we do too? Identify only with the people we want to, ignore the homeless, Ignore the people who don't have as much, who don't have the proper clothes. I don't think you're not here, but it's done all over. So who am I? What did Jesus want when he said, who do you think I am? Did he want proper identification? Or did he want us to think about what it is, who Jesus really is, and what we need to do? And what we need to do is help others. Call them by name. How important it is. How important it is to be said, hello, whatever your name is. How important it is to know that someone cares enough to know your name. I feel pretty awful because I'm very bad at remembering names. And I always wish that everybody would wear a name tag. It would make life so much easier. It is something I wish I had the gift to remember everybody's name because I know how important it is. I know how important it is to be called by, hello, Joe, hello, Martha, hello, whoever. But it is not that I don't care 
But sometimes people feel that uh, they are not important enough to me. So I go through great lengths explaining one of my faults, that I have real trouble remembering names. Does that make it okay? Not really. But it makes that person feel better. It isn't that I don't think they are important. Because I think every single person is important. Because we are all children of God. And that makes us pretty, pretty special. Regardless if you believe or don't believe, we are children of God. And we are special in his eyes. It doesn't matter if we like him or don't like him. But they are special because they are children of God. This has become my new mantra to say every morning because there are certain people I really do not like. But I also know I have to love them. And that's hard. That is very hard. But if I call myself a Christian, if I identify with that, then I have to become more loving, more forgiving, and more totally involved in calling everyone special because they are children of God. Amen.